Yo, what is going on? This is JSR. If you're watching this video and you see the beautiful Dapper Kite and his Marbo that goes round and round, shouts out to Raiden, then you, my friend, are probably interested in some level three manipulation shenanigans. And I can't blame you, but if you've watched from afar, you might be thinking to yourself, this looks extremely difficult. Now, I'm not gonna kid you and say it's free. It's not free. You are gonna have to practice these patterns. You are going to have to work at getting in to level three on the correct cue. You're gonna have to work on a way to start your timer perfectly and start your game perfectly. There is a little wiggle room for mistakes. I mean, we're all human. You will reset, even after you master this technique, there will be times you make mistakes. But at this point, I've been working on this thing for a while, and at this point, I'd say 80% of the time, maybe more. If I get in on the correct musical cue, I'm going to see one of the four patterns I'm looking for. This basically means that I am going to be able to have a shot at the manipulation pretty much almost every time I do a run. So this video is a tutorial on how to set this thing up. Uh, a tutorial for how to get into three on the correct cue. A tutorial for which of the zoles I'm looking at to tell me which pattern I expect. And then finally, what to do on each pattern. I'm going to attempt to get all four um, and show you guys how to do them. It's a little easier said than done um, because there is so much RNG. And uh, if you want, skip ahead. I'll put timestamps in the description below on where each individual uh, manipulation is. So if you're only looking for one pattern, for example, um, go below and look for the pattern and click the timestamp. If I didn't do that, then I'm lazy and come yell at me in Discord. Uh, I will also have a in the description below a document, a spreadsheet linked for your reference during runs. So if you're doing this to start and you're not sure which pattern is which, the spreadsheet below will tell you, okay, this pattern is the Nutter Butter, for example. Um, also, there are other patterns. I haven't documented every pattern. Um, I, at one point, had eight patterns I was going to learn and document, but I figured most of these patterns I don't get if I do the manipulation right. There is one or two I still get from time to time, but for the most part, I get these four. And those four patterns are in the, the document, um, and I call them by names just so it's easier to say, oh, that's that, instead of, oh, this is the left, right, left, up, right, right pattern. <laughs> um... Or right, right up, excuse me. Um, no, that's Nutter Butter. Or Four Swords. Actually, it's the exact same pattern. Uh, the visual cues are the same. There's a little difference, and we'll go over that as we get the pattern. So, without further ado, um, let's listen to the musical cue. And I'll explain that in just a moment. But first, you might be thinking, why is your timer at night? Minus 4.53 if the offset is minus 5.13. And the answer is this, my friends. My OBS is out of sync if I have my live split set up to split right away. So for example, um, I wish I could show this better, but you just have to believe me. My live split is 0.6 seconds behind what I see in real life. So when I split, I don't actually see my, my timer start or split for 0.6 seconds. Um, that's for you guys at home to have a, a better viewing experience. Um, I actually have two timers and I'll show you what I normally use during runs. And that is this guy. So that's actually the offset I use on my actual timer when I'm doing runs at home now. Um, this way, I start both timers 
um, with a global timer, but the only one I really care about for my pace is the one you see now on your screen. So this one will be at zero when my run starts with that offset in my, uh, in my setup. So your mileage may vary. All you need to worry about to make this manipulation work is 5.13 countdown or a 4.53 with a 0.6 delay. You're going to start that timer on a musical cue on the main title screen of the game. And when that timer, that 4.53 with a 0.6 offset or a 5.13, I'll just say a 5.13 from here for, when that gets to zero, you're going to press start to start your game. And that's where things get fun. Do I have safe states enabled? I do, okay, good. So let's go ahead and try this. Here we go. So when the timer gets to zero, it's not gonna appear that way on screen because of the delay. But again, remember I'm using an offset. So, from this point forward, what I wanna do is screen scroll into three. Again, I'm gonna be using save state so I don't have to reload a bunch of times. So. There's a little leeway here. But not a lot. Remember, we're trying for world-class time, so I don't want too much leeway. All right. I made a safe state on that screen, so. You have a little time, if you make any mistakes, you have a little time to recover. I'd say probably in the neighborhood of a second, maybe a little less. Um, so if you miss a scroll once, you're probably okay. If you're short on both scrolls, you're probably okay as long as you tap forward quickly. Um, but basically, we're looking for an audio cue to enter level three, and I'm going to hopefully nail this first try so you can hear it. So let's see. Listen very carefully to when I enter level three. That was pretty close. I think that was it. Let's see what pattern I get on a 202. This is what I call the four swords pattern. So we did nail it. So that was the correct musical cue on the correct offset. And this is the second best pattern in, that I get out of the four. So in this pattern, you notice the three zoles on the left went left, right, and left. I'll get a, a little Z on screen if I can. I think, where's my little Z at? Oh, there it is. Give me one second. Let me unlock my little Z. Okay, so this guy started here and went left. This guy started here and went right. This guy started here and went left. Now this guy ended up here and moved here quickly. This guy ended up here and moved here quickly. Those are keys for this pattern. Sometimes this Zoll will not move quickly to this tile, but everything else that you see on the screen will look the exact same. Even this guy down here chilling by his lonesome. That is a fake four swords pattern. Uh, it means you're late, that you're not on the correct RNG. So the only time you're on the four swords pattern is if both these guys right here and right here move quickly towards Link when Link is about in this neighborhood. And this is one of the four patterns. So let's reload this. This was a 202, and I'll showcase the four swords pattern first. All right, so this is a two flat. I should get the same pattern. This will also showcase the four frame frame rule. So we are still on the correct RNG. I'm gonna set up a safe state here. This is factor two. And watch the Zoll at the very top of the room and the two Zolls that are directly in Link's path, but slightly to the right. Let me use a little Z to point them to you. This guy here, this guy here, and this guy here. Starting from left to right, these are the three zoles that I'm using as a secondary cue. This guy's gonna go right and then right quickly. This guy's gonna go right and this guy's gonna go up. That lets me know I'm on the correct RNG still. And also is my backup secondary cue to let me know I'm four swords. We're gonna get around the block quickly, get around the block. And a 211 means that we're frame perfect. 
And now we're into factor one. Factor one is obviously the biggest inspiration for this manipulation. We're going to attempt to kill the dark nut frame perfect. Um, is this the best way to do any of these patterns? Probably not, but this is what I figured out. Your mileage may vary. Um, this one is probably the most forgiving of all four as far as the ease of getting the bomb. Uh, this is really hard to mess up. You can mess it up if you're late on the, on the final third sword. Um, also, one thing to keep in mind, and I'll go over this when we get to it, the Dark Knight that's headed left at the moment, he's going to be the one we're looking for a damage boost from. We do not want to come down this, this column. Um, you'll gain a frame. I don't know why, but you gain a frame when you come down this column. You want to come down this column. So what we're going to do is Lil Z is going to go up until the top of Link's head gets to the top of Lil Z's head right about there. Then we're going to sword whip down. Then we're going to come down about a half tile, come right and stab left as this dark nut comes back and it comes up like this. Then we're going to boop him left with a beam boop. A beam boop is where you stab the dark nut a very specific way so he flies across the room and a beam follows him so you get two hits with one attack. If you're a top runner, you've probably already incorporated this into your repertoire so you know exactly what I'm talking about. The bomb is going to spawn right about where little Z is. So after we get the final kill, we're going to quickly grab the bomb. And then this particular spot does not need to be frame perfect. We want to get to little Z and we're going to hold left on this tile. The dark net's going to come around, knock us up. And at the end of the damage boost, because we're holding left, it's going to suck us into the doorway. And that's how we're going to stay frame perfect. And that room looks like this. I'm probably going to fail this miserably my first try. So bear with me. Okay, so I got the bomb, but one thing you notice is I didn't get down on the half tile, but that's okay. We were still frame perfect. I'll show you one more time. I, I knew that was going to happen. See, that is one example of being too late. So I was getting, I was on the full tile and still got the bomb. Actually, it seems to be a little easier to get on the full tile. That's how it's supposed to look. And we even got a little spike hit on the dark net, but you notice we lost the frame there. This game is very picky on how its frames work. Um, little things like that. We hit the dark net with a beam. And that costs us a frame. That's, a, that's insane to think about. Something like that. We hit a dark nut with a beam. And that costs us a frame. You'd be surprised at the little things that cost us or gain us a frame. Like, for example. Watch my frames. They were at 18 when I did it correctly. Now we're at 17. So that's why we must come down the column second from the left. You can come down the half tile if you want. But that's how you do the factor one room. We're going to come in here and this keys is going to boop us forward. And now we're going to have iframes to get through the trap. And then here's the room that used to have four swords in it. That's why we call this the four swords pattern. The original manipulation uh, had four swords. This one is a little better, a little more reliable, gets us a bomb easier and has three swords. But I just never changed the name. Uh, this is going to be where we go straight up to the top of the room. And on our way to the doorway, we're going to utilize three sword buffers to set the RNG for us. Each sword, of course, being 13 frames. So we're burning a lot of frames, about 39 frames here. Uh, but we're going to be setting it up for an atomic bomb in the next room with a guaranteed bomb if we execute it correctly. So, one, two, three. And then we're going to kiss the keys. Oh, I messed up. Hold on. What did I do wrong? Yeah, I lost the frame there somewhere. It's that fickle, folks. It is that fickle. We're in a button hook, like so, and there's our bomb, and we got a full package there. There's two frames. Actually, there's three frames. I never got that one before. Usually, I get either just a bomb, or I get a bomb, heart, and two rupees. Um, depending on what you're going for, the two rupees is honestly probably the best one. It's worth getting the two rupees in this case. Because um, you know where they're going to spawn. You know that that's what you're going to get. But that's what basically 
the package entails. So basically what you're doing, just to recapitulate, and I'll show one more time, so you're gonna come down the center tile until you get to the door, and you're quickly going to come and button hook to the right and drop your bomb like so. And the reason I died there is that I went right too slowly. You have to quickly go to that right tile, and it's a little tight. Like that. That's where you want to go. It's a little tight. Like, this is definitely going to kill you a few times. I've lost a few runs with this manipulation pattern uh, to getting gridded or being too slow and walking into the dark net. So don't be, don't be mad if that happens to you. You will die there. And as you can see, there is one frame where you will not get the bomb. But I tend to get the bomb here most often than not. Of course, now I'm not getting the bomb at all. I call this tutorial luck. But that's typically what I get, something like that, like a bomb and usually a heart. Obviously the heart's best for refill, and to get rid of the annoying beeps. Um, this is where this manipulation ends, unfortunately. I have been unable to get a consistent frame perfect pattern uh, past this room um, to get to Manhandle. I'm sure somebody out there can figure it out. I've I've messed with some sword buffers, but there's still enough human error that I haven't quite been able to do anything to keep it frame perfect to get to manhandle on this pattern. So your mileage may vary, and I wish you luck if you decide to pursue that. This is four swords. So now I'm going to attempt to get one of the other three patterns um, for your learning enjoyment. So again, we're going to hit our audio cue. And we're going to wait until the timer on my end says zero. And I'm going to press start. <coughs> you have to pardon me, I just got home from GDQ. And I've got a little bit of a cold, so please bear with me. <clears throat> also, bear with me with the marathon luck with my scrolls being terrible. This, hap this happens to me every time I'm trying to teach this. There we go. Alright, so I had a 226. Let's see what we get this time. Okay, so this is a pattern we call the internut. This pattern is hard to execute, um, but it is one of the four patterns. You notice the Zol went up here, right here, and left. U R L. The internet. But I call it the internet because I like puns in the dark nut. You know, nut, net, whatever. I don't know, it's a dumb name. Come up with a better one, please. Uh, one thing to note, this is all will come left if you're on the correct RNG. If he goes right or stalls, then you're on the fake internet pattern, and that also means you're late. Um, there are, I've noticed, a few fake patterns. Like one pattern you'll see if you're early is all three of these guys will go up. If you're late, all three of these guys will go up, but the other queue in the next room won't work. Um, that pattern is usually when you're very early, so I'm not going to bother noting it too much here, but... Yes, this is the internet pattern, so let's do that again. I might get a different pattern here. I don't remember what I entered level 3 on last time, so let's see. Nope, internet again. Okay. So we should have a wide open path. You notice the Zol is going left. We're going to have to go around him on this pattern. So, something to note. A little bit different path in this room. We're going <clears> to <throat> go around him without getting gridded, just like so. Now this is the tight part. Now you notice the darkness coming straight down at me. Uh, we don't want that to happen, so we're gonna go left. The moment we enter this door, we're gonna be buffering left to go a half tile left of where Link is right now. Um, this is extremely tight timing. I don't know if it's double pixel perfect, but it's close. I did not get the bomb, so one of my swords was off. I missed the second sword. Missed the second sword. Now you notice, I'm failing this one a lot. 
Notice that time I didn't... He went down because I didn't get on the half tile. That time I was late. I got the bomb, but I got gridded up. And I lost the manipulation. I was a half tile too low. I got gridded. I got gridded again. Ah... <sighs> This pattern is annoying. I figured it's worth showing it, but this is not a pattern I want in runs. There it is. I think. I think we're in there. If we are, then this keys will come up and meet us right here. That didn't feel right. Hang on. Okay, that, that's got to be it. Hmm. I don't think this is right, but let's try it anyways. Nope, that's it. Okay. Huh. That was weird. Let's do it again. I, I feel like I did something wrong. So what we're doing is we're coming to this half tile, we're gonna bop the keys and then hold left. That sets the RNG. Don't get gridded there. Little things like that, you'd be surprised, go a long way. So you notice that, that I get bopped back if I don't kill that keys. So we're gonna kill the keys, then walk into the next keys. And that sets our RNG. We're gonna drop a bomb. And then do that. And once again, we're gonna drop a bomb on that tile right there. We're gonna go down to the door. That's gonna draw the other three dark nuts toward us. And then we're gonna drop a second bomb right there. That was a little early on the second bomb. And if you do it right, you'll get a bomb. Um, that part's nice. The initial kill, as you saw from my many failed attempts, is extremely tight. I don't like this pattern, um, but it works. It's just extremely difficult to pull off. Uh, I would die to get a better pattern for this particular manipulation. Um, maybe burning some swords in the Zol room before, perhaps? I don't know. But this is pattern number two. So we're halfway there. I can't believe we got both patterns in the first two tries. Man, it's almost like this manipulation is giving you a pattern you can work with almost every time. Let's try a third one. I think I might cheat until we get one of the other two this time around. There's two more patterns we're looking for. The Heinz 57 Stank Sauce and the best pattern, the Nutter Butter. I would like to do the Nutter Butter last, so it'd be actually pretty convenient if we got Steak Sauce right here. See, there's a little room to recover if you mess up the scrolls. Alright, so I had a 224. Okay, so I was early. This is one of the patterns I do not have a manipulation for. Um, I have never gone this far. So I was definitely early. That means I pressed early on the start screen. That was not the music cue in the overworld. I screwed up on the start screen. Now this does not mean that we cannot get the manipulation with this RNG. It just means that the music cue is going to change. Obviously in an RTA we wouldn't know that. And at this point you'd have to just play the game. But this is one of the few that you're going to fail. Let's go a little later. Well, 223, let's see what this is. Make sure we know where we're at. Again, of course, something I didn't mention earlier. If I didn't, then I'll mention it now. Yeah, so we're still early. Um, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but The Legend of Zelda has frame rules just like you'd see in the game like Super Mario Brothers. Uh, four frame frame rules to be precise. They're very different though, like than Mario's. Uh, the RNG changes in a number of different ways. Um, we're still kind of trying to figure that out. We know it's a four frame frame rule, and we know it changes when you go in or out of the overworld and underworld or into a shop or cave. That four frame frame rule, however, can change be the, uh, determined by the RNG 
excuse me, not the RNG, the targeting of link and anti-link. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, we're specifically talking about this. You notice that arrow? Every time it changes, it changes the RNG. So it's something to do with that. That's active on the title screen as well. So it has something to do with that. We don't know the details just yet. We're still trying to figure that out. It would take somebody smarter than I or more patient than I or somebody with a better approach than I have to figure out exactly what's causing that. But all right, so we're four frames later than we just were. We are guaranteed to be on a different RNG. I think this is going to be the same one we had the first time. Yes. Okay. Alright, so we might be on a different one this time. Might be the same one, we'll see. Okay, so this is Nutter Butter. You notice they got the left, right, left pattern. Let's get the orange, let's get it again. Alright. Pay attention to the Zoles. This is the best pattern in the game. This is the fastest pattern in the game. And this is the one we're going to take all the way to the ladder. Oh no! Oh, okay, 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 never mind. They reacted differently because I let go of the D-pad. Okay, we're good. Um, this is the initial movement. The Zoles go left, right, left, and your Zoles in the middle will look kind of off from the Four of Swords pattern. This is your first indicator that you're on a different RNG. Um, your second indicator is going to be the Zole in the top left in the center. The one uh, cad uh, diagonal to link to the left. I'll put little Z on them so you can see it. Oops. No, I don't I don't know what I just grabbed, but I didn't want to grab that. This guy. He's going to go up at the very last second, so pay attention. That's how we know we're on the four sword, or the nutter butter. And then the Zoles will give us another path. They'll go right, right up, just like they did on four swords. But you'll notice this time the Zole at the top of the screen is going to delay his movement towards the center of the room. Whereas in the Four Swords, this guy would quickly end up here. This guy's not going to quickly end up here. He's going to hesitate on this tile. We have to burn a sword in this room to set the RNG. Anywhere, you can burn it here. You can burn it here. I like to do it as I turn here, kind of as a buffer. I sword this guy, he splits, and then I go up through the door. Um, and I'll show, how, I'll, I'll show you how that looks, but it's really up to you. Um, how you want to approach it. I got gridded. Let's do it again. There we go. Okay. So in this room, we're going to be targeting the Darknet directly in front of Link. Uh, it's a pretty reliable kill compared to the Internet one. Um, not as easy as the Four Swords one, but more often than not, on this pattern, you're going to get the bomb. Um, it's really easy to get gridded on the bomb pickup, but if you execute this right, you you can stay on the manip. And this is the one that we're going to take all the way to the ladder. So hang with me and let's enjoy the ride. You're going to sword up, sword left, boop him. And you notice that's a really wide window for this bomb. This is a really wide window for this bomb. So you're going to sword up, boom, beep, left. Even though I got gridded and I dropped the manip, I still got the bomb because I was able to hit him with the beam. This window is large. There's like one frame where you won't get a bomb. And it usually is only a frame you're going to get if you make a mistake, if you get gridded. As long as you don't get gridded, most of the time you're going to at least get the bomb here. And you're looking for a 46, so I lost the manip right there. And we got our 46. And here we're going to shoot this keys after we pass the compass and we're going to tank the traps. And here's where the nut Nutter Butter gets its name. Um, we need to burn a sword in this room to set the RNG. Uh, the only way to do that without the Dark Nut becoming an issue is to poke him in the butt with a little boop. I'll show you what I mean. If we just walk around this block and burn a sword here, he becomes a problem. But if we hold up and left and go boop, we burn the sword correctly, and we don't have to worry about the Dark Knight. We're going to run into the keys here, and here comes my favorite of all of the Atomics. That's where we're aiming our bomb. I'll show it one more time. Now it's too low. Yeah, we don't want that one. We're going to get a clock. That's where we're aiming the bomb. 
Now, in this particular pattern, there's a number of different or a number of different frames you can hit here that is going to give you a bomb drop. We do not want a clock, however. If you're if you're just trying to get through this room and you're not worried about Manhandla or anything beyond Manhandla, then the clock's not that big of a deal. You just might end up burning an extra bomb. But this is so insanely fast that it doesn't really matter. If this is all you want is just to get through this factor two, then this is probably fine. If you're one pi uh, frame lower, one pixel lower like I was in the last attempt, then it's probably no big deal. You're still going to get your bombs here. There's, uh, I think, about six frames that are most likely to get hit, and I think four of those six have bombs. So the, the window for bombs is pretty wide. I typically aim for this spot right here. So I'll get a bomb and a clock here, and that's going to screw it up, but we did get the, uh, the quick kill. We're going to drop a bomb there, and we're going to hold down. So, bomb, bomb, pick up your bomb, and then hold down. You were looking for 48 there. And that's how you know you're frame perfect. So as soon as you drop that second bomb, your bomb should finish spawning. Pick them up, and then hold down against the shutter. The darknet's going to walk into that second bomb, frame perfect. Because the bomb goes off before he gets there. So as long as you're holding down on that shutter, you will be frame perfect out of that room every single time. No if ands or dark nuts. And we're still on a frame perfect run at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down right here. And we're going to aim to sword when Link is right about where Lil Z is. We're going to sword down. That's going to get us through this dark nut. If you sword too late or too early, you can lose or gain a frame. I'm not sure exactly why. Um, but you want to do it in the middle of the block. So hold down right, sword there. And we're through at a 220. We are frame perfect. We're going to sword through this keys. This room is deceptively tough to stay frame perfect in. If we are just frame perfect, then the keys will not bother us again. It will look like they will, but they'll circle around like he just did, and we'll be out at 1030. Go right, then up. It's easy. And then here we're going to hold up right. In here, the keys are going to get miraculously out of our way. It's a beautiful thing. Now here comes the biggest roadblock to anybody who wants to frame perfect all the way to Manhandla or beyond. And that is placing these bombs frame perfect. Now, there are three particular frames that we're looking for here. Um, if we get the frame perfect bomb twice in a row, we're going to get a Manhandla that's going to allow us to stay frame perfect through level three if we choose to. Otherwise, we're going to have to kind of give, take what the game gives us and try to get a good manhandle a kill, and that's going to be the end of our manipulation. Um, technically, the manip to the ladder is not the fastest way to do this, so this could be a, a player's choice really here. Um, but what we're trying to do is drop the bomb so that the, the left edge of the bomb is on the black pixel of the second tile from the right. If I, if I can get it first try... I'll show you and you'll be able to see what I mean. So we're going to soar through this dark nut and drop the bomb. I think I got it. Yeah, that was it. Let me do it again. Nope, I'm one pixel too far. So in an RTA, if I didn't notice that, there's a tell in the next room and I'll explain that as we go. But that is one pixel too far. But we can still make this work. You might be thinking to yourself, how is anyone going to do this in an RTA? That's way too pixel perfect, JSR. You're, you're crazy. Well, this is not easy. Like I said before, this is not easy. It's not easy, but we can recover from this. So let's try again. All right, so we're a pixel too far, and I'll be able to tell with this dark nut in this room. See how I kept going up? If I was a pixel on, if I was on frame perfect right there, then that dark nut that's going up right now would have, would have came back down. And if, obviously, if I was a uh, pixel too early, I would be able to see it because the blue pixel would be on the tile ahead. Um, if you don't, if you understand what I'm saying, there's three pixels there. We hit the last pixel that works. Um, I don't think you can recover from being two pixels off. I don't think. Because I think if you go two pixels early, the bomb won't explode the wall. I'm not sure on that. But basically, I'm one pixel off right now. So I need to drop my bomb in the next room a pixel early. And that should recover. I got gridded. Let's do it again. Should be a 204. There we go. Ah, two pixels too early. 
Nope, that's frame perfect. There it is. Alright, so here comes Manhandler. We're gonna drop a bomb, walk into him. And I lost four, four frames. Ah, I'm gonna lose four frames here. Yep. There it is. And Triforce. Ladies and gentlemen, we are still frame perfect. Although, I think there is some sort of value that happens sometimes where we lose or gain frames or the RNG changes somehow, so I'm not sure exactly what causes that. But we are frame perfect, so if we do get a weird pattern in the next couple of screens, uh, just note that that can happen. I don't know what, ha what causes that, but we are frame perfect, so we should get proper patterns all the way through to level four. And note, if you're just trying to get through Manhandler, there are four other patterns that I've mapped out in my map handler, which is in the document. Uh, it tells you which Manhandler to expect. So if you're two frames early, what Manhandler you're gonna get. If you're, if you're a frame early, if you're frame late, or if you're two frames late. So if you're aiming for that pixel perfect bomb, these are the five outcomes you're most likely to see. And that way at least you can kill Manhandler and keep your run going. And it's very fast. If you get the perfect manhandle kill, uh, this is about a 205, 206 level 3, depending on uh, whether or not you stay frame perfect or not. That's fast. It's not like blow the world away fast, but keep in mind that's every single time if you get this RNG. So, not hard. I promise you, this is, with a little practice, a very doable pattern. So, coming out of this cave, we're going to burn a sword to get the proper RNG and walk on the full tile. This should be a 201. We're going to hold up left here. And we're going to use a visual cue. All three of those moblins are going left. It's like an offensive line. Now, there is, again, the slightest possibility that we're off. I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe a sub-pixel value. Um, maybe the Zelda gods are conspiring against us. So, if that happens, then so be it. You just have to scroll the next screen, I guess, or whatever. But... Um, if you're gonna attempt to keep it perfect from here, you're gonna walk up to this half tile here And if we're still on these Yep, we're on So what we're doing is we're utilizing the black pixels in the block ahead I'm missing it uh, These pixels right by Lil Z's ear That group of black pixels when link is lined up right about there on this row we're going to sword through, and if we do it right, we can get through these Octoroks. We are on the correct RNG. Let's do this. There it is. Still frame perfect. The sword buffer and the full tile coming out of three was per, uh, paramount to get us RNG that we could walk to level four on without any of the Octoroks getting in our way. Believe it or not, that was a lot harder to do than I thought it was going to be. And... So you might be thinking to yourself, you thought that was hard, JSR, how the heck are you going to get through that dark room coming up in a few minutes? You can't ladder clip frame perfect. Well, sir or madam, you are correct. I actually was very afraid, learning this, that I wasn't going to be able to get through that room. And I said, okay, well, I'll try a bunch of different RNG manipulations, unless it gets really crazy, uh, until I get a pattern that will let me through the diagonal room. But I'll see what the game gives me first to see if I get lucky, and oh boy... Oh boy, did we get lucky. But first we gotta get through these rooms. We're gonna sort up, and these guys are gonna be a nice easy kill for us. We're gonna go on the half tile, sort up once, and don't get gridded. Perfect. In this room, we're gonna hold down left coming out of the gate. And when we get around the uh, unseen diagonal blocks, pretty much in line with the, Zol the, the vires in the center of the room, Pretty much when Link gets right about where Lil Z is. We're going to go up. These guys are going to go right, and they're going to hop together. And I'll show the visual cue for that in a second. So we're going to hold down left. Uh, okay, so see where they just converged? Pretty much where Lil Z is. I was wrong on which Zoles do it. But pretty much when, they're, when they converge right here. That's where Link is going to turn right. And he's going to go up on this tile and then hold up left to get through the door. And that's how you do this frame perfect. Let's see if I can nail it. Got him. 
First try. And here we're gonna do. Oh, and then I immediately get gridded. Two swords. Oops. This is actually a deceptively difficult room. We stayed frame perfect, though. In here, we're gonna hug the bottom of the wall and we're gonna burn two swords that's gonna set our RNG for the NSU room, which is one of the most difficult rooms in any of the manipulations to execute. Um, so just be ready for it. It's not easy. All right, here we go. Can I nail the most difficult execution in the entire manip? Nope, I messed it up. <laughs> Let's try again. <coughs> Got him! Alright. So what we're doing is you're gonna hold up left coming out of this door. If you don't hold up, or excuse me, upright. If you don't hold up right, then this vire will do something different and will mess up the entire room. Uh, it's the exact same frames to hold upright as it is to walk straight out and then go up. But as you can see, if I just come out of the room and then go up. Those two vires go up to the, they, they converge. That vire at the top by the key door does something different than if I hold up and write, see how he goes down? I don't know why. Probably something to do with reading the D-pad or Link's position, I have no idea. This game is weird. So when we get to the bottom part of this end, as we're going down right about here, we're gonna sword down and then right about here, we're gonna sword down. I like to space them out just so you don't accidentally burn or, or gain a frame. You're gonna drop the bomb before Link goes as far right on this half tile as he can. On this tile as he can. You don't want him to go too far right. You want him to drop the bomb so it's gonna blow up anything right here, but you don't want him touching this edge. Because if he does, you're gonna lose frames. He'll snap to the grid as you go up. So before he gets to the edge, drop the bomb. Then you're gonna go up, and you're gonna drop a bomb facing up on this tile. This buyer is gonna jump over you. So you're gonna drop a bomb on this tile, Come right, and as you come down this, this row of the U, you're going to burn two swords, and then you're going to have to burn a bomb. This was the only way to get the proper RNG in the breakfast room. Two sword swipes, bomb bomb, two sword swipes, burn a bomb, and then when you get to the, the right side of the U, be careful not to get gridded on this tile. You're looking for a 705. I got gridded. Boom! And then, poetry. Easy game. And just for funs, we're still frame perfect, let's go. This, if you execute to this point, is a 342 ladder, and oh by the way, I was still frame perfect until I paused it right there. Um, if I stay frame perfect at this point, I can sword the third keys coming out. And this is where the manipulation ends. I have not been able to get it any further than this. I suppose you could walk around the ladder clip and stay frame perfect to Gliok somehow. Um, I haven't done that work yet. I've been messing with it a little bit with Nest Cardinality. No results as of yet. But it is possible to at least get out of this room frame perfect by utilizing that bubble bop. Um... I shouldn't have saved it. I should have showed you that breakfast room once more. But as you saw, I mean, it was beautiful. It's easy. The breakfast room is literally free. So. Uh, that is the Nutter Butter manipulation. We still have one more to show. Let's see if I can get it. We're looking for some steak sauce. So let's do one more. I'll reload a few times to try to get steak sauce. It'd be nice if I got it right here. That'd be really cool. I might still have a shot. Alright, 137. Oh, I didn't save it, it doesn't matter. Alright, steak sauce! Ha! That's hilarious. Ooh, I thought I was gonna get hit by Mateo. Oh, I like that. 
I'm early. Let's just see what I get. I don't think this is going to be steak sauce. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get weird RNG. Yeah, that was early. Early. Late, but we might still get steak sauce. Mateo can be a jerk, and obviously if you get hit, you don't have beams, so you won't be able to do any of the manipulation patterns. Okay, that's internut. Okay. You know what's funny is I scrolled a little differently on that screen, so we might have different RNG here. Yep, that's nut or butter. Okay. I may have to do this over. The RNG changed when I scrolled. Yep. That's fascinating. So this is nut or butter again. Alright, so we're gonna have to reset, I'm pretty sure. Oh, no. I don't know what this is. Alright, we're gonna have to reset anyways. I mean, we got the manip, we just didn't get the pattern I wanted. That's hilarious because I had the pattern. And then I, uh... Because I didn't save. And I scrolled differently. The RNG changed. I find this fascinating. There's so many factors, but... Still a pattern that we could work with. Oops. I didn't save it again. Cat's okay, nutter butter. All right, that's a one forty nine. This might take a few tries. If I can't get it, then I'll. What the heck? 147. <coughs> Excuse me. If I can't get it, then I'll just show the pattern. I have a save state. Nutter butter. Alright, so this should be different RNG. That's internuts. This is probably gonna be nutter butter. Yeah, we're early. All right, one more try and then... So this is the original 149. This is probably gonna be Nutter Butter at this point. I'm pretty sure we're gonna hit that same frame rule. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna try one more, and if I can't get the pattern this time, then I'll just explain the visual cue um, that we're looking for with Steak Sauce. And then I have a vi I'm pretty sure I have a save state for it. But let's try once more. Tutorial luck. So that's a 155. That's Nutter Butter. Alright, 159. This should definitely be different RNG. If we get Internet, though, I think we confirmed my suspicion. Sure as shit. I think Internet and Nutter Butter are linked. And I think Four Swords and Steak Sauce is linked. I can't say that for sure, but I think that that's what's going on here. Is that there's two different RNGs for each targeting that you get. I think that's what's going on here. Okay, so with, with Steak Sauce, obviously the safe state that I have is one room too far. So I can't show you the visual cue. But with the zoles that we're looking for, on the left, the pattern we're looking for is an up, right, up. Uru. 
those three zoles from top to bottom will go up, right, and up. That's how you know you're on steak sauce. When you get into this room, they'll open up a path for you just like so. Um, pretty simple, just get through. Pretty simple, just get through. Okay, only had to reload once. I was getting a little nervous there. All right, so if you remember, internut was extremely tight. Steak sauce is not as tight, but it's pretty tight as well. Um, the bomb is hard to get on this pattern. Um, it's tough. It is what it is. So we're going to go up like that, left. And Heinz 57 steak sauce. You notice the frame count there? That was 57. So what I'm doing is I'm shooting a beam when Link's head is right about there. Uh, there's actually another frame where if Link gets about to there, that it will work on. But we want to hit through this dark nut and boop this dark nut with the beam. So he shoots up and then he's going to walk left. Then we're going to beep boop him, beam boop him left for two hits. And then we have to kill him going down. There are two frames that give bombs. There's like four frames that do not. It's tough. This is a hard pattern to execute. And then three sword buffers. See, we were too late there. Too early there. And 57 on the frame count. That's steak sauce, baby. That's where that came from. Because this is extremely difficult to execute. Uh, both internet and steak sauce I've only done a few times in RTAs. They're very, very difficult. But they're still pretty fast. And you will see these patterns enough that if you're really trying to do this right, it's worth learning them. Um, but it's up to you. And again, these might not be the best patterns. This is just what I've been able to figure out. So for those of you out there who are looking into this, you might want to try something else. Maybe burning a sword somewhere or doing something to set different RNG. This that I've shown you in this video, this, uh, what is this, about 20 minute video now? Oh, it's almost an hour. Never mind. I lied. It feels like 20 minutes. This hour long video is almost 50 hours of work and practice. So maybe more than that. It might even be more than that. So keep in mind, your mileage may vary, but feel free to put in some time to figure things out if you don't like the patterns. Um, because this game is not limited to what I'm showing you now. In fact, this is not the only way to manipulate the game. There are more ways to manipulate this game. This is just what I found and what works for me. So for steak sauce, we're just gonna go through here, we're gonna sword the keys, and we're gonna tank the trap. So we're gonna just kill this keys and take our damage. We're just gonna walk through here, no sword buffers. And we're gonna do two swords before we pick up the keys. And boop, this is gonna set our RNG. We're gonna do a button hook to get our bomb here. And then a second bomb. Now we didn't get the bomb. There is a few frames here where you won't get the bomb. but it's a pretty good kill. You can also just come down and touch the door. But that doesn't seem to give the bomb as much, so your mileage may vary. Let's see if we didn't get the bomb there. I find I get the bomb more if I burn the extra frames to go right. But that time I didn't, so again, your mileage may vary. But that is Steak Souse. And those are the four patterns you seem to get the most doing this manipulation. There is a fifth pattern called the Uru, but that's typically if you're early. I don't get the Uru if I'm on point. Um, again, your mileage may vary, so good luck to you in your uh, Zelda 1 manipulations. May you find much love and success. And hopefully this allows you to enjoy speedrunning this game once more. Um, it has reinvigorated my love of the game. I could not stand level 3, as any runner loves to meme about. But it's true. There's something frustrating about going through level 3 over and over and over again. But with this, if you're resetting in level 3, just take comfort 
and knowing that this time it was your fault. If you failed in Manip, it is your fault. It is not the game's fault. It is not chat's fault. It is not RNG manipulation fault. It is your fault, sir or madam. You either scrolled slowly, started your timer at the wrong spot, or you did something wrong. Um, with these four patterns, if you execute correctly, you will always get bombs. You will always get through. And as we saw with the Nutter Butter, you can take it as far as you're willing to take it. It's probably even possible to take it further. And I encourage people out there to try to take it further. Uh, where can we take that? Maybe go to MMG after level three? Maybe even go to level eight? Who knows? I know I'm pretty content with the latter times that I'm getting now. Consistently in the 340x range. So that I, I encourage you out there to experiment a bit. Uh, check out the spreadsheet that I'm including in this video. I want to thank a few people out there who helped me come up with this. Uh, first and foremost, let me shout out the Dr. Blue. Dr. Blue was uh, in my chat one day and was the one that sprouted the idea. Um, I don't know how much he looked into this before I did, but I want him to get credit. He was the one that inspired it, the idea in the first place. Um, and he was there encouraging me, as was my boy Fiskbit. Fiskbit helped a lot with figuring this out. Uh, he was the one that helped me realize the targeting changes, the spawns that you get in three. Uh, he, he was there supporting me through a lot of this, as were a number of different people. My boy Takate uh, actually was helping taking notes the first day I did this. Um, he was the first person to actually attempt manipulations that wasn't named JSR. And at GEQ, when I taught him the proper way, he nailed it first try. It was insane. Uh, shouts out to Lack Attack for being uh, the first sub-29 runner to say, I believe you and I'm going to do this. Um, shouts out to Crispy, one of my moderators, for supporting me. Pronzo for all of the awoos and the support in this in insane endeavor. And I can't wait to see Pronzo learn this because my dude, it's real. I was able to teach this to a number of people at GDQ. Please learn this, dude. It's it's not hard. It's really not. I mean, just learn one of the patterns. One of the patterns is all you have to learn. And then just play the game normal if you don't get that one pattern. Uh, shouts out to only level one live. Matt Marr, one of my mods, has been pretty supportive of this. Uh, Dr. Cossack was very supportive in chat. Unrelated Pants, Raiden, uh, Keith, not Keith, all of my other moderators. Ice Blue has been very supportive of this. Zarnax was supportive of this. Um, shouts out to the love I received from Green Mario and Darkwing Duck at GDQ. Uh, Jay Coper. But at the end of the day, everybody who's shown support, interest, John Tabin. I, didn't, I can't forget John Tabin. He's been there supporting this. Um, I was able to make believers out of non-believers. I was able to make supporters out of non-supporters. And at the end of the day, I'm just happy to give something to the community that could change the way we run this game. Because at the end of the day, I just want people to get the best times that they possibly can. I want the leaderboard sorted by skill, commitment, and execution. All those three things. Who's the best player and how much are they willing to grind this game? Well, it takes the RNG out of level three. It really does. I can't wait to see if people pick this up, how the leaderboard evolves. Because I'm telling you guys, I went from sick of this game to I'm consistently well ahead of my normal paces. And it's not because of the time saves that this manipulation allows for. They're nice. This is very fast. But that's not the point here. The point is you're getting fast starts consistently that allow you to get runs out of three. And that's what's great about it. So I encourage you to give it a shot. Uh, hit me up in Discord if you have questions. Uh, refer to the manipulation spreadsheet that I showed earlier um, and best of luck in learning this and remember Make sure your d-pads tight. Don't get gritted. Let's do this Peace. Oh Shoot I got 25 seconds before it's exactly one hour there once was a man named Jack and He never got any money back He bit his upper lip learned the manip and now He's as fast as lack or something like that. I don't know. I just made that up. Have a good night, y'all. Good luck. Happy manipulations. Peace.